Kitsch matters. Kitsch is important. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Carla. I am the owner of both Coco Naughty and Desert Soul Vintage. Coco Naughty is my art and fashion boutique. Desert Soul Vintage is my vintage shop, which is quite a bit removed from my primary shop, Coco Naughty. Two very different aesthetics, two very much parts of the extreme that is me. I am a creature of extremes. I love bright, bold, and funky. I love kitschy, vintage, and a little earthy. I don't know how that works, but it does. So today, today we are going to be talking about kitsch. Why I love it, why I buy it, and why I sell it. So let's get on into it. Uh, what I'm going to do though, instead of my holding up items, I'm going to be taking you over to my table and I'm going to be inserting a voiceover of the items that I'm going to be talking about. Let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, my claws are off for this video. I typically have them on, but a couple of times of year I do. But a couple of times per year I do remove the fake talons and I allow my natural stumps to breathe. I trim them down really short. I let them breathe for a little while and it's just it's just maintenance, you know. I'm I tend to be a high maintenance creature. I mean purple hair, bob haircut, you know, so that's just all part of the it's all part of the Carla way. So anyhow, what we are going to do today is I'm going to be taking you over and showing you the goods, as I mentioned, my just a small selection of recently acquired kitschy goods, why I pick them up, why I love them, and most of them, if not all of them, are going to be for sale in Desert Soul Vintage. So first of all, yes, I love kitsch. I love bold, funky fabulosity. I mean, I live in an apartment full of gold sparkle pillars. There's disco balls everywhere, which you can't see now, but there's one there, there's one over there. You know, 70s, 60s Hollywood Regency nonsense. It's, hi, of course she loves kitschy tacky stuff. And when I go out sourcing for myself, for my own home, for Desert Soul Vintage, yeah, obviously I keep an eye out for kitsch. I think kitsch is just something so, so unnecessary that it's necessary simply because it makes us happy. It makes us go, what the hell is this? And why do I love it? But I need it, so I'm going to buy it, and every time I see it, it's going to make me smile. That, my friends, is the long and short of it. Kitsch is important because it makes us feel good. Just by its very ridiculous existence, it makes us feel good. All right, so let's head on over to the table and let us discuss my recent kitschy finds. All right, so I have my makeshift little show and tell system, my little situation set up over here. I have you on a tripod. I have my poison of choice for today. It's just an iced tea. Mm. Super strong Earl Grey, which is the best. So let's go ahead and get on into it. I think the best way for me to do this is to talk individually about items and I'm going to try to cluster them by category. So the category today is, of course, kitsch. So we will start with the first category, loose category, and that is going to be uh, figural pieces. And most of the pieces that I'm going to talk about today are figural, but are we ready for this? Oh yes, the lady head vases. We love these retro head vases from the 50s and 60s. Let's see if I can get you. This is a much better view, right? You can see it, my little ladies here. So we all love, of course, the cult classic head vases from the 50s and 60s. I have two that are essentially identical. It's just one of them's larger and she has a smaller hat. But I am quite particular about my head vases. There are a ton of them out there, but I like them to have a specific style to them and color. This one I think is my favorite because she's got the lime green. We, we love a bold color around here. Lime green, gold, and just, I love it. I'm not a fan of the vases that have the false eyelashes and I don't necessarily enjoy the ones that have the loose jewelry as well. 
I just like them sleek and kitschy elegant, if you will, because she's definitely kitsch. I mean, it's a vase. It's a head with a hole in it for flowers, right? She's she's super kitsch. Uh, I've never used these for flowers. I simply leave them as decor, or I have had them on my vanity for makeup brushes. And here's the larger one. I love the size of this one. I prefer the larger size than the smaller, but uh, she's essentially the same, just different colors. Pretty much the same face though. And next up, <laughs> okay, avert your eyes, ye clown haters. Oh wait, we're not done. We're not done. Here's a, uh, a gloved hand. This is for sale currently in the shop. The Thing, are we all familiar with Thing from Adam's Family? This is his sassy girlfriend or zesty boyfriend. Don't know what his preferences are, but there you go. That one is for sale. Also kitschy, kind of creepy too. And that's a segue into what I was warning you about. Avert your gaze, clown haters, because we've got something that's kitschy and cute and, according to some people, kind of creepy. Clowns. I love clowns. Retro clowns specifically. I'm a huge fan of clowns. Sideshow posters, all of that. I'm not a fan of the whole circus animal situation, you know, Barnum and Bailey, blah, blah, blah. I do understand it was a different time and place, but uh, I do appreciate the advertising, the graphics, and all of that. And the clowns in particular. I love clowns. This is a lamp that I will never part with. I mean, never say never, but I have wanted one of these clown lamps for ages, but in, again, specific colors, and I happened to find this one out here in Palm Springs at a vintage market, and it was so inexpensive, which is an anomaly out here in Palm Springs, but I guess nobody wants creepy, creepy clowns in their life, but it is a lamp, and it does turn on. Now, the bulb on this has blown out, and I have not replaced it yet. But what makes this one extra creepy <laughs> is that its eyes light up red. <laughs> so, okay, I'll, I'll give it that. I'll give it that. It is definitely a, a little bit of a creeper. I get it. I get it. I get it. We're not done with the clowns, though. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. We've got paper mache clowns. These are Mexican paper mache clowns, again, from my personal collection. I have decided that it is time to let these go because I do have a few more pieces of vintage clown art. I have a few paintings, and I think it's time to let the little ones go, with the exception of this one, because I myself have purple hair, and the colors on this one are just very me. We have the... Hello, bright magenta, magenta, we've got the purple, we've got, hello, the yellow, and I don't know if you can see, but we've got lime green crystals on today, and this one's got lime green eyes, like we met. Oh, very, very me. I'm, I'm quite sentimental about some of my little tchotchkes here, but the little ones, the lilac and the blue, if they are not for sale yet, they will be very soon. But these little guys are just... Mexican paper mache and they are literal paper incredibly lightweight but just so cute these were super popular in the first half of the century and I don't know to be honest with you how far they extended I know that into the 70s they were still producing these and these look as though they might be 60s or 70s I could be wrong uh, maybe even 80 I, you know I'm not sure I'm not going to pretend that I know but from what I've seen of the paper mache figurines these look a little 70s 80s to me in terms of the colors so that might be accurate there's a lot of neon being used here and that's not something that you would see prior to the 70s so those are my little paper mache clowns, my clown army. You can see, look at this, this army of creepiness back here. We've got hands, <laughs> unattached hands, ladies with holes in their heads. Kitsch, man, kitsch is so necessary. <laughs> you gotta love kitsch, right? Because kitsch serves two purposes. It can serve simply 
as a decorative object. Put this on your desk, put it in a kid's room, do whatever just to serve as decor. But it can also be utilitarian, creepy clown nightlight, because it does light up. It's not super bright, but it's bright enough to serve as a nightlight. And then we have these, which are bud vases, pen holders, what have you. Kitschy, weird, unnecessary, but also utilitarian. The beauty of Kitsch Baby. So let's move on to, we're still on the figural subject here. I should have, I should have unwrapped these prior to filming, but my next topic of conversation is going to be creepy fat angel babies because who can't get enough creepy fat angel babies. <laughs> now these pieces of ceramic are available in my shop currently and as you can see it is a vanity set and or bathroom set. These date back to the late 60s early to mid 70s. There is another piece of this. It is a soap dish of which I've never been able to find out in the wild, but I recently was lucky enough, oops, to find these. And look at those faces. I'm sorry, but if those are not little devil children parading as cherubs or pooty, I you know, I really shouldn't get that confused. Cherubs are the ones that have wings, correct? And Pooty are simply the chubby babies running around like little goblins. But look at those faces. I mean, and I don't know what that one's doing. Is it pulling its hair? Is it petting the other one? Uh, what is happening here? What I, I don't know, and frankly, I don't know if I want to know. But these little weird demon floaty winged bell ringing babies are awesome they are see this to me is creepy the clowns not so much but this is weird but i have these three pieces and i think they're really cool can i be honest it took quite a bit of fortitude for me to say you know what you cannot keep the creepy babies and i'll tell you what if i had these in white or off-white or they do come in another color, which is an olive green. You all know, we've gone over the head vases. We know how much I love green. If I had these in an olive green or white, I absolutely would have kept them. They would have matched with my color palettes of the greens, the whites. They did not produce them in purple because if they were purple, absolutely, they wouldn't be going anywhere. These are great. Use them for dining, use them for storage. I mean, how weird is this as a water goblet? or wine goblet, a cereal bowl, candy dish, anyone, just fabulous. Love them for their weirdness. And again, kitschy but utilitarian. Next up, continuing with the chubby baby trend, tr trend, okay? It's a trend to me, all right? Are the, oh, this is gonna be an issue. Okay, well, I'll show them to you. See these, these here are putty, correct? No wings, just a naked little humanoid demon angel baby. I refer to it as humanoid because do children actually move this way? This is a very adult, at the very least, adolescent pose for a chubby baby to be holding, right? Oh, it seems a little sus to me. But in any case, let's see if I can scoot you back a bit. There you go. You can see it a little bit better there. But these here, I purchased both as a pair. And these are part of my personal collection. If you didn't know by now, if you couldn't guess, if you don't know me from my other channels, I love Liberace. I love ostentatious, gaudy, 60s, 70s Hollywood Regency and Art Deco. I know these are not Art Deco, but I'm just giving you a taste for my decor flavors. 60s and 70s style, specifically Hollywood Regency, the early, late 70s, early 80s disco Art Deco revival, that sort of thing. Those are my gigs in terms of interior design and style. And of course, as I said, 60s Hollywood Regency gaudiness, 
Liberace, hello. They go hand in hand. And actually, this one should be on this side. Those are mine. They are not going anywhere. And these are candle holders. I said I like purple, right? The candles that sit in these are purple. And those, mm, given that they're so delicate, ugh, I gotta be careful about putting them up here. Are they safe like that? Ooh, I wanna move on quickly. Let's see. This little chest that I have everything sitting on is tufted, so I'm a little nervous about putting my things up there. We have one more pair of items that are in keeping with this kitschy, neoclassical situation, this classical revival style. I have these candle holders. Oh, those, um, the angel candle holders, those are from the 80s to early 90s. Next, we have more candle holders. Do you see a trend here? Does your girl love candles and candle holders and neoclassical tackiness? Yeah, she does. These two columns. Now, you might say, well, they're just columns. whoop de doo whoop de doo But it gets better. It gets better. Those two columns have these little cherubs, which are candle huggers. And if you have no idea what a candle hugger is, get ready. Get ready because I squealed squealed. I mean, I know that sounded a little aggressive, but <laughs> I squealed aggressively when I found these. And I will demonstrate why. Does it surprise you at all? Gaudy princess that I am. Gold glitter candlesticks. Oh yes. Gold glitter candlesticks. Now, check this out. Check this out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. <gasps> oh my goddy god oh my god <laughs> g-a-u-d look at this ridiculousness are we seeing this are we seeing this how cool is that let's see if i can get you a better look here oh my god so unnecessary and yet so necessary for its ridiculousness so those are candle huggers and i have a pair of them and they are incredible they make me smile every time i see them and i will give you a close-up of these so you can get a look at how cool these are just plain white with some gilding on them Here's a fun little factoid. We are going to get a little bit off topic here, but I like to educate where I can. I enjoy educating and being educated whenever I can. The neoclassical revival period, which was strong from the 60s, and then it saw a little bit of a lull in the 70s, and then it came back with a vengeance in the 80s with the whole cocaine chic situation. Everybody wanted pillars and columns everywhere. Um, we see we are accustomed to seeing the white columns, right? And the, the white statuary. When in reality, in antiquity, Greco-Roman style was not all white alabaster and marble. We, we see it now and we think, oh, chic, sophisticated. Ugh, these Romans were incredible with their, with their running water and their all white aesthetic. Actually, if you do a little bit of research, watch a few documentaries. There are some fabulous ones out there, really thorough and in-depth. If you watch documentaries on Pompeii and Herculaneum, specifically, specifically Herculaneum, because that disaster site was preserved far better than Pompeii was, the archaeologists discovered that in Herculaneum, when they would find these columns, and they would find these sculptures, they were actually brightly painted. Now, the, the pigments have, of course, faded over time, but it gives you an idea when you see the 3D renderings of what it used to look like. Oh, Rome, Greek and Rome, oh, they were not these sophisticated white alabaster marble beauties. No, they were looking a bit like this. 
which when I first heard this many years ago, art history major, hi. Um, when I first heard about that years ago, I was it, it thrilled me to no end. On the one hand, I was disgusted, and on the one hand, I was excited because I thought, cool, the 60s up through the 80s, they brought back this really chic, cute, all-white neoclassicism, which is amazing to me because when you see neon lights on white, they just glow with the neon, and it's incredible. So we got that out of it, but then at the same time, we have this this whole new idea of how all of these, you know, Roman senators and their white, um, what are they called, the uh, the togas, and no ma'am, they were likely brightly colored walking around streets that looked like Las Vegas. How incredible. Anyways, going off on a tangent here. See, this is probably more accurate. <laughs> these little creeps are more accurate than those. Isn't that fascinating? Okay. Let us move on to, we are done with the figural segment of this video, and we are going to move on into the creatures, 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 creatures. What is a video extolling the virtues of kitsch if we are not going to talk about the creatures? This little guy here is from the 70s. He's actually a big boy. I don't know why I called him a little guy, but this is a lion, a ceramic lion piggy bank. We're all familiar with these retro piggy banks, the brightly colored neon chalkware piggy banks. I love all of those chalkware and clay pieces, but they are difficult to find in the wild for obvious reasons. They're incredible. Everybody purchases them and most people buy them to resell. And I want a couple for my personal collection because as I told you, I like bright, gaudy things. So this one is not my style, but I thought it was very unique for a couple of reasons. Number one, the size is quite large. He's, he's a hefty guy for a retro piggy bank. And also the glaze is quite unique. If you take a look at this glaze here, it looks as though it was a wax crayon glaze and what that means it's a type of glazing stick that you apply like a wax crayon it is not a wax crayon but that's how you treat it it's almost like a pencil and you can see it in the eyes there well you may not be able to pick it up here but um, some of them are applied with a stick some of them more like a pencil so it ends up looking like a pencil sketch and I thought oh that's really cool and uh, he just has a cute little little cheeky kind of guilty looking face which I think is cute and he is indeed a piggy bank and he does have his plug at the bottom the stopper next up is a classic Japanese ceramic where we've got the fabulous Miss Meow that's not the official name of this piece but she's a beautiful I'm going to assume it's a Siamese cat. Nice size, gorgeous, lovely. I am not a cat owner. This makes me want to be a cat owner just so I can keep this as my, my homage to my cat. This one and the lion, if anyone is interested, they are in the shop. But this is just a beautiful, simple, all white, elegant, look at this, eleganza, elongated, white cat sculpture, statuette, figurine, whatever. I think it's too large to be just a figurine though, right? She's quite large. But we see the difference, right? Classy kitsch, as I like to call it. Kitschy classy. Traditional, just wonky kitsch. And seeing the spread out on the out on this little table here, the surface, you see my particular tastes for kitsch, right? I'm not into stuffed animals, I'm not into squeak toys and those sorts of things, but I love porcelains, paper mache's, ceramics, that sort of thing. More timeless kitsch. Plastics tend to, uh, to, to disintegrate and rot over time and just, ugh. Now I have a more contemporary piece here but this definitely falls into the useless decorative kitsch, but weird. 
this is a one-off, a one-off hobbyist piece of this blue, it's not a bear, it looks like a bear, right? It looks like a slim bear, but it is a tiger. If you see it in person, you can see it, so let's see if I can focus a little bit. You can see its stripes, and it is a deep, 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 deep bluish green glaze with bright green grass and is doing a leap in the air. It looks like a ballet dancer. This is a very graceful aggression with creepy yellow eyes. Almost looks a bit raccoon-like. But look at that. Is that not just so cool and weird and unnecessary, but it's just awesome. You will never find another one of these out there. This one is definitely 100% a hobbyist piece. It is signed at the bottom. I don't know who made this, obviously, nor am I certain on the age of the individual, but I'm going to guess it was a child because most adults don't think this way. A blue tiger on some bright green grass Unless you're some kind of a weirdo artist, right? And I can say that because, hi, weirdo artist. But, yeah, it was either some kind of super creative adult or a child. And this one, I think, is just so cool. And I will tell you, if this kid, if this kid, what's her name, Katie? Yes, Ms. Katie, it is signed at the bottom. It is signed. That, that looks like a child signature, doesn't it, Katie? If Ms. Katie... <laughs> had painted this thing magenta, purple, any other color, I would keep it. Not so fun fact, blue is my least favorite color. I do not decorate with it. I do not wear it. I do not have it anywhere in my apartment, so I just, I stay away from blue. But any other color, any other color, and this would not be for sale, but it is. Oh, look at that. I didn't even realize we have a whole cat theme going on here. We got Mr. Lion, we got big old kitty, we got little kitty here, and we got another big old kitty right here. So we've got lions, tigers, and Siamese cats. <laughs> Interesting. That was entirely unplanned. So there you have it. This has been my little show and tell video all about my some of my recent acquisitions, some pieces from my personal collection just a random selection of kitsch. We've got classic wonky kitsch. We've got what I like to call classy kitsch. And just, just, just a little of this and a little of that. This was a fun video to make, show and tell videos. We have to do this in the future. I like having a theme. I like running my mouth because what do harpies do best? We run our mouths all day long. We screech, we claw at people. It's just what we do. So that being said, this will be my third refill because I've been running my mouth for a long time. Editing this video is gonna be fun, ugh. But I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me and having a peek at my kitschy collection, most of which is for sale. Well, some of it, not all of it, but about half of this is for sale. So if you saw a piece that piqued your interest, head on over to Desert Soul Vintage and check it out. And you'll have to let me know down below. What was your favorite piece or your top two or three favorite pieces? Show me, let me know your top favorite pieces or let me know what you thought was the creepiest. What was the creepiest and what is your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to uh, hang out and chat with you all. That is going to do it for me today. Thank you for watching. Take a look down below. Everything you need to know, links to my shop, etc., will be down below. And uh, I will see you in the next one. I'm hoping to grow my Instagram. So if you are on Instagram, please follow me. If I see that my Instagram starts to grow a little bit, I think I'll start posting uh, reels and short form videos and all of that fun stuff showing my kitschy, fabulous collection. All right, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.